This is the now obsolete McLaren 650S, which will soon be replaced by the McLaren P14, also known as the 720S. And I'm going to be the first to say I'm not very excited. Leviathan here, even without the detailed specs of the 720S, also known as Project 14, I'll be honest and say I'm not that excited. I know there's going to be thousands of people just jumping up and down with excitement on the thought of a brand new McLaren, but let's be real here, today's generation is obsessed with anything and everything that shimmers, but I'm not that easily manipulated and here's some of my reasons why I hate the McLaren 720S. <laughs> Now reason number one is the McLaren platform because within the series of McLaren models there's no clear pattern between them and that's the thing which drives me insane. Look, with Ferrari it's a pretty simple lineup. You have your Ferrari California T which is your front engine sports car platform. Then you have your Ford 8 which is your more supercar style perform mid engine car. Then of course you have your F12 which is completely insane V12 platform. And then obviously there's that Ferrari FF, if you own everything else you get the FF. But with McLaren it's not that clear, look, every car from the MP412C to the P1 share the same 3.8 V8 engine, the only difference is really horsepower. They all have dihedral doors, they all have the same basic design shape. In fact, you wouldn't really know the difference if it wasn't for McLaren's little branding that they put underneath the car, whether it's Sport, Super, or Ultimate. And that's all what you really get. And each time McLaren comes out with a little bit more horsepower, they have a brand new car. And that leads me to point number two, repair and maintenance. Look, you may not know this, McLaren does not have a single parts warehouse in North America. And what does that mean? Every single repair that a McLaren has to go through is always going to be delayed by customs. Look, this car has been in the shop many times, and every single time there is issues due to custom delays, which take about two extra weeks. And a repair, a repair goes from being a month to two months, given how many parts are required to come in from the UK. Look, all of that money that they're spending on R&D for new mid models and studying aerodynamics and so forth, they're completely forgetting about their existing customer base. It's not that hard for them to just have a parts warehouse in North America to service their existing customers, yet they spend millions on R&D for a brand new car. And most supercar these days come with a 3 year factory warranty, but the thing about McLaren is as soon as the warranty expires, the prices tank. That really just shows you the confidence people have in the reliability of McLaren, and either McLaren should focus more effort addressing those issues or they should be giving their customers a bit more of a longer warranty because there are not that many places which will actually service the McLaren. These cars are complicated. Point number three is design. Look, all of the facts that have come out of the McLaren 720S is that it's more aerodynamical or the increased downforce or the improved cooling through some door design and things like that. But that's all great and everything but nothing really inspires me, nothing speaks to my heart, nothing gets me excited. Like, I love the design of the 650S, don't get me wrong, and I think that's perfect, but when it comes down to McLaren, I think they should spend more time to at least have their brand recognized and improve their brand value. People need to be able to recognize what the McLaren is. You can't go from one design to the next. And Ferruccio Lamborghini said that if the car does not astonish people as it drives by, there's something wrong with the design. And I think McLaren should really spend their time making sure that their brand is recognized rather than shifting through the lineage every single time. And let's be honest here, what I see in the 720S is a front end from an NSX, the side from a McLaren F1, and the rear end of a P1. And to me, that's just downright lazy. And finally, depreciation. So McLaren has a history of cannibalizing their other products, meaning when they release one product, it completely diminishes the value of another. Let me give you an example. When the 650S came out, the 12Cs were being sold at a massive discount. So well, another thing that's interesting, when the 675LT came out, it could actually be tuned to be faster than the P1. And obviously that would hurt McLaren's exclusive owners, so they decided to actually detune the 675LT to prevent it from being more powerful than the P1. And to sum up my little rant, I feel that the McLaren strategy has altered from being a true driver-centric brand to a brand that just focuses on producing as many cars as possible in the hopes of acquiring new customers at the expense of their own. And to put it in simple terms, as a McLaren owner, I am disappointed. 
and that's just my personal opinion, and I, and I truly hope that what I'm saying right now is wrong, and the McLaren proves me otherwise, but for now, that's just how I feel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I know this was a bit of a rant. If you do agree with me, be sure to leave a thumbs up, and let me know your comments down below. Until next time.